Well, good evening and welcome to Varsity Conversations. This is week two. Uh, last week we uh, welcomed uh, Sheila Spencer to come and be a part of this. And uh, she was our guinea pig. And uh, I guess uh, Phyllis all top tonight is, is also sort of a guinea pig as we're still getting through this and getting... Uh, getting started in, in all of this. So uh, Phyllis Alltop is with us. And Phyllis, um, let's start off and just, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you were born and your childhood, your growing up years. I was born in Franklin, Indiana. And uh, when I was two, we moved to Bloomington, Indiana. I was uh, raised there. I had a brother that was 11 years older than I, uh, Bob, and my sister, Dorothy, was 16 years older than I. So, um, and I began school when I was six years old. I went to Arlington Elementary School. And my first grade teacher, her name was Mrs. Mums. Mrs. Mums. Mrs. Mums. And, uh, I enjoyed school very much. We, uh, we had one teacher that at uh, one of the recesses, we, the school was on a highway, but back then, 70 years ago, the highways weren't that busy. And there was a store across the street from the school and she would walk the class over there and we were allowed to get an ice cream cone all through the year. Oh, and, wow. Yes. And back then, ice cream was only a nickel a dip. <laughs> so, um, but my favorite was lime sherbet. I don't know why, but <laughs> that was my favorite. That's good. But I enjoyed recess very much. Uh, we played jacks, and I played on all of the playground equipment from swings to slides to teeter-totters, and the monkey bars was my favorite. Uh, but Now, you had the industrial playground equipment. It wasn't the soft plastic stuff that they no, had. No, it was, it was metal, <laughs> some type of galvanized yeah. metal. And, uh, but I enjoyed school very much. Uh, I cried when I was sick and couldn't go to school. So you you enjoyed school. You were you were a good student. Yes. Uh, what was your favorite subject growing up, especially in let's say elementary? I think writing was my favorite, mm -hmm. and uh, just to see the different letters and how they were formed, and how they you could form them into words. I guess writing and spelling was. One of my favorite things. Did you enter a spelling bee? I was there at school, yes. And I won. Strange thing was, uh, the one time that I didn't win was I misspelled a simple word jar, J-A-R. And I don't know why, <laughs> but what came out of my mouth was G-A-R, uh. gar. So that's how I missed G J yeah. yes, that's an that's an understandable mistake. Um, so uh, who was someone outside of your immediate family that had a big impact on you as a young person? I think my great aunt, Flory, was uh, one that had a great impact. She was a Christian and had a Christian home. We usually had family reunions at her house. And, uh, but uh, my love of cooking came from her because she, she could bake and, and make pies and cakes and anything. And I, she would allow me to sit on the edge of the table, this big wooden table that she had in her kitchen. And she would let me sit on the edge and ask her all kinds of questions about <laughs> cooking while she was doing that. But uh, she was a great influence on me. That's great. Flora, you said? Mm-hmm. 
And uh, what sort of play or activities or games did you enjoy as a child? Well, I enjoyed more outside games. Uh, Red Rover, softball, tag, statue, and uh, I loved to play jacks, and uh, I was pretty good at that. And uh, just any kind of outdoor games, going, going sledding in the wintertime, oh, you know, and like thinking fun. snowmen and, <laughs> you know, running through the woods and playing. Uh, tell us, tell us about your salvation experience, how you came to know Christ, and what was that process like? I was going to a, a small church just down the road from where we lived, and, uh, I would go to Sunday school there and, and to church in the evenings. And uh, my parents didn't go at that time. And I made a lot of friends there and the Sunday school teachers. And uh, over the course of time, and I just began to feel the God tugging at me to come forward. And I was... Uh, I went up and gave my heart to Jesus on a Thanksgiving evening and uh, was baptized. You have a service on Thanksgiving Day? Yes, in the evening we did. Okay. Yes. Um, how about uh, your spouse? Uh, how did you meet your spouse? What attracted you to him? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was a teenager, a young teenager. And we met through his aunt, and uh, we started dating. And uh, his and I got to meet his parents. His uh, it turned out that his mother was one of my Sunday school teachers that I didn't know. And uh, but we met and uh, met my father-in-law, that was a very dear, dear man to my heart. I just loved him dearly, and uh, he was a very quiet man. And uh, but we met there and dated. What was his name? My husband's name was Leon. Leon. And so you met through your aunt. You really loved his his father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Strong influence. Yes. On you, very good. Um. Did you attend college? I attended an Ivy Tech, mm -hmm. and I uh, got a two-year associate degree in business there. Very good. Uh, and uh, any other uh, vocational training through the years? So. On the job training, I was trained as a nursing assistant I was trained as a health unit coordinator and uh, where I worked at in critical care and cardiovascular care at the hospital. And uh, we had our own chapter of health unit coordinators there. And uh, I was the president. We would travel to national conventions. Uh, one was in, was in Atlanta. And, uh, but I enjoyed working there very much. I worked at the hospital for over 30 years. In what capacity exactly? I was, a, I was a nursing assistant for the first 15 okay. years. And then for the rest of the time, I was a health unit coordinator in critical care and uh, floated once in a while to cardiovascular unit. Uh, we had patients that were organ donors, and uh, we would uh, keep that patient viable until a team came down from Indianapolis to harvest the organs. Gotcha. I've always wondered how that worked, yeah. Okay. It's very interesting. Um, I am an organ donor, by the way. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what's been... Uh, well, let's, let's talk about this. Uh, tell me about children. Do you have any children, and do you have any funny stories about them? I have three children. My oldest is my son, Nias, N-I-A-S. It comes from 
Ananias in the Bible. Uh, I have two daughters. Uh, my middle one is April, and she lives here in Florida. And my youngest, Tanya, lives in Ohio. Um, funny stories, my, my daughter would say, Mom. <laughs> but um, it was, they were all so funny, and they played outside all the time. Uh, one really funny story about my son, he probably doesn't think it's very funny, but we raised feeder calves, and it was, and we had one bull. He was only about a year old, this bull was. He was a black Angus, but he thought he was just a pet, that he could go anywhere. And um, our children shared chores. They would alternate every six weeks. And one morning, my son went out to uh, let the bull out, and I don't know why, but he had the rope around the collar of the bull and had it tied around his waist. Oh my word. <laughs> yes, and you could imagine, the bull decided to, for some reason, to take off, and he ran down through the woods with my husband, with my son, Nias, dangling behind. Oh my goodness, how, was he injured? But, I mean... He just had some scratches, <laughs> but other than that, but that's, you know, I don't think he could live that down. Oh, wow. Just uh, one of those instances as a kid where you think, I think I'm just going to try this. Yes. <laughs> It'll be okay. What could go wrong? Um, have you ever had any brushes with uh, famous people, celebrities? I don't believe so. I... Uh, we went to see uh, Elvis Presley one time, at, uh, but I never really got to go up and meet him. But uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay. Some people do, so I'll, I like to ask that. Um, what were you doing when you got the news that President Kennedy had been shot? I was working in a restaurant at that time. Uh, I, it was across from the college, and it was called the Chatterbox. And uh, I was waiting on a table when it came over the, the TV. What was the feeling uh, in the restaurant? What was going through your mind? It was just disaster. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do now? You know, it was, it was horrible all through the restaurant. Yeah. There were tears and... People just shaking their head. This hadn't happened since Lincoln, so yes, you know this. This it's I imagine would be similar to the the World Trade Center situation where you feel vulnerable. You know? Yes, and yes, my husband and I with the World Trade Center was watching CNN in the morning when that happened, and. Uh, so we didn't know if we were at war or well, what was going to happen. Uh, I was in Chattanooga uh, checking on a, uh, or I'm sorry, in Knoxville at the children's hospital, checking on a little girl in my children's ministry that was having some eye surgery done. And we were in the room and on the television it showed up the first plane hit. Mm -hmm. Didn't think a whole lot of it until the second plane hit, and then I just, I knew immediately in my mind, this is a terror situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hmm. All right. Um, tell me about uh, your family's Christmas traditions. Did you have anything special that you always did at Christmas time together as a family? Uh, we would gather around my husband and three children uh, on Christmas morning. It, I worked night shift uh, for a few years, but as soon as I got home, if it was Christmas morning, then the children would all 
already be up waiting for me to come home. But we would decorate the tree about a week before Christmas and uh, gather all everything around and we would go out in the woods and gather different colored berries from the trees and, and string them and put them on the tree along with the other lights. And uh, It was a live tree, not It artificial. was a live tree. Yeah. It was what they called a ball tree. It, uh, after Christmas, before, when we got it, we would dig a hole before the ground froze and then and save the dirt in a bag so that it wouldn't freeze. <laughs> and then after Christmas, we would plant the tree. And oh, okay. so we had several trees lining our driveway from our Christmases. So those were Christmas memories from yes. years past and mm -hmm. you, you planted them out front. That's awesome. Uh, and, and your husband wouldn't let the kids do anything until you got home from, from your yes. shift. Yes, <laughs> had to wait, yes. And we would sing songs, and you know, but it was a great time. Great, great. Uh, did you have a favorite family vacation or uh, memory that really stands out? We went to um, Mammoth Caves and all through there in Ruby Falls. We took a vacation and went there one time. And uh, never will forget, uh, our older two was were small. They were like three and four. And uh, I never will forget, as we were walking through the cavern, my son, he knew how much I loved rocks. I mean, I have rocks from everywhere. <laughs> and uh, But as we were going through the cavern, he goes, Dad, this is nothing but a bunch of rocks. <laughs> so, so it We was, see these all over the house. Yes, they're all everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. tell me about your rock collection. Where, how, uh, how diverse is it? Yugoslavia oh, wow. is one of mine. Uh, a, a nurse friend of mine, she went there on vacation and brought me back a stone. Yes. That was... The farthest away. Do you have any petrified wood? No. no. Uh, I actually do, uh, but it was not legal. We won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, let's see. Have you ever traveled outside the U.S.? Uh, I went to Mexico briefly. My daughter and son-in-law uh, lived in Corpus Christi, Texas. And we went down to visit them one Christmas, and uh, we made a trip into Mexico for sh just the day. And uh, another time when uh, my youngest daughter is in Ohio, her uh, husband Chuck and Christopher, their oldest, and uh, we went to Canada. Oh, okay. We had gone to Lake Erie for the day, and mm -hmm. then we went over into Canada. Uh, that's awesome. I've, I've been to probably some of the same places. We went to uh, Niagara Falls and just went on over into Canada. Didn't stay long. It was mm -hmm. pretty expensive. <laughs> Came back. And then uh, in South Texas, I've been into Matamoros, just like you say, briefly for the mm -hmm. day. Um, and my brother was a missionary uh, in South America, so got to go to Paraguay and Colombia. So that was very interesting mm -hmm. being down on the Amazon for sure. Um, all right, so what about any special awards or achievements uh, that you have accomplished in your lifetime? I got an award for uh, writing in one of my English classes when I was in eighth grade. And uh, I got, uh, just recently, about three, four years ago, I got Volunteer of the Year Award and uh, went to Orlando and received the plaque. Oh, and wow. it was a big to-do. Well, this is probably a good time to get into your writing because you are a writer. You've written several books. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in writing and what what. What uh, excites you about writing? 
I, um, I was advised to write my memoirs years ago. And uh, when I moved to Florida, I was living with my daughter and son-in-law. And my son-in-law, Donnie, he encouraged me to write. And uh, my first book, which is called Bear Attack, I had a dream one night. And uh, the next day I told Donnie, and he goes, Mama, you need to write that down. And so my first book is based on a dream I had about a woman being attacked in the land by a bear. Well, and I would have thought that would have seemed out of place until I actually came to Florida and realized there are bears here. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but I wrote three books on the same family as they grow through the years. And, uh, and the third book, it, it uh, brings into view our climate change, our global warming, and uh, some of the things that are going wrong. I do many hours of research and uh, about global warming and anything that I'm writing about. Uh, the permafrost in Alaska was melting. And because of that, there were many microbes and different diseases coming to the surface that the science uh, did, they uh, did different, took different samples and did testing on them to prove that they were alive after so many thousands of years of being buried. I uh, also, in that book, it, uh, I, the young girl, well, the girl that was young in the first book, she was now older. She had been a flutist and she became a veterinarian. So in order to know something about veterinarian medicine, I interviewed a veterinarian and I was allowed to go to Spring Oaks Veterinarian Hospital to view a surgery on a dog. And so they, people are very helpful when you want to go around. I've interviewed canine officers about their dogs and, and different people. You know, that's something that I know for me, I didn't always appreciate the research and the background that has to go into writing a book, writing a novel. Uh, there's a lot of research that you have to do, particularly if you're wanting to be accurate in your descriptions and, and uh, if you're talking about real life events and it's something that you know a little bit about but you're not an expert in, but you become an expert by the time you yes. well, finish your book. Yeah. That's like this fourth book. Uh, it's all science fiction. And there's no one I can interview about different planets in the universe because no one has traveled. I mean, we've gone to the moon, and but that's only scratching the surface. Uh, so far in this book that I'm writing, which should be out in six months, they've already gone to like at least 20 different planets. And one of the things I must do is I have to describe the planet. Just think if you were describing the Earth. You've got to describe the terrain, the rainfall, the different climates that is on the surface of the planet, the inhabitants of a planet, their speech, their government, different areas, what they eat. It's, it's really world building is what you're doing and uh, it's if you don't have the background work done then you you may get to a point in your story where a character needs to do something but you don't know you don't have a construct in which they perform their actions I guess or that's like just in one of the chapters they went to uh, this planet and it turned out that it was alive. They had landed on a creature. 
and it was so large they thought it was a planet. And, uh, but through the main character, Marietta, she discovered, you know, that something was going on. So they went out, sent out search teams and investigative teams to uh, test it and see what they found. And they could feel the surface moving. And one of the explorers said, it's like it's breathing. And so they discovered through their exploration that this planet was alive. All right, don't, don't give away too much of the planet. <laughs> but uh, that's just one planet they went on. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, so you've done different genres, and uh, you have a lot of interests, it seems like, in, in writing. Um, and you're working on a novel currently? Yes, it's science fiction. Is that the one you're talking about mm -hmm. now? Okay, so you're, it's still ongoing. Uh, let's see. Did you did you, did you ever? You mentioned uh, softball. Did you ever play organized sports growing up? No, we never did. Uh, I would. We would meet after school or at lunchtime, and sometimes on the weekend we would go to the school and play softball. Did you ever learn a musical instrument? I played the clarinet. Okay. Was that high school band? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, hmm, let's see. So, would you favor Florida, Florida State, or some other school? Or you don't care? <laughs> Florida State. Florida State, okay. Um, favorite foods. Talk about favorite foods. Uh, you mentioned your aunt that you would watch mm -hmm. cook. Uh, so you learned a lot from her, so um, are there favorite foods that you like to eat or, or like to cook that your family loves? Or? Well, my favorite dessert when I was a child was my mother's cherry pie. And uh, she would make cherry pie for me and she would make uh, raisin pie for my brother. Raisin pie? I don't raisin think I've pie. ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Uh, and mother made the best cornbread and uh, and things like that. Uh, I guess I don't care for meat. I mean, really. I mean, my favorite kind of meat would be a sloppy joe. Now I know that doesn't <laughs> appeal to many people, but uh, and not manwich, but homemade sloppy joes. There's a world of difference. Would you describe yourself as more of a sweet tooth? sweet as opposed to savory things? No, not really. Um, I like all fruits and vegetables and uh, I that's basically what I eat on but I make I bake cookies at Christmas time and different time to and candies and different things to give out to people and uh, I have to give it away or I'd eat it all. <laughs> Um, all right. What is, what's been the greatest tragedy in your life? Most difficult experience uh, you've lived through? I think the greatest is the latest. I lost my grandson. He was our firstborn grandson. And, uh, that was just a tragic, it was so surprising. He just didn't wake up one morning. And... Uh, you had no inkling something was no, wrong? No, he wasn't ill or anything. And I think the worst, the most heartbreaking part was he was my daughter's only child. Mm. And to see her suffer to go through losing her child was the most difficult for me. Yes, uh, we, uh, we had a friend of, of ours who just recently lost her son and um, we, of course, reached out to her, but then um, 
also reached out to her parents because they they were very much grieving too, mm -hmm. and everybody was focused on the mother and uh, her her child, but really the grandparents heard right along mm -hmm. with them. So yes, absolutely. Um, so what what keeps you going every morning? What motivates you? What excites you? Well, I get up in the morning, and uh, like some people my age, I have to write things down. I have to have a schedule. I have to be organized. And so every night before I go to bed, I make a calendar for the next day's events. Uh, when I get up, I eat breakfast, and then I read the Bible. And uh, do my meditation and my prayer time then. And sometimes if I didn't write it down, I may just get up and start doing things, you know, without focusing on what was important. Mm -hmm. So I must write things down. And some days I have nine or ten things on my schedule. But uh, I hear people say they're bored. And uh, I really don't see how. <laughs> I, uh, I have so many different interests. Um, I teach a Bible study on, on Monday afternoons, and I have to prepare for that. Um, I uh, read my Bible, and I do research on my lessons, because many times... The people that come have questions, and I don't have the answer. So I do research and find the answer by the next week. And uh, I have my writing. I must... There are so many characters in a book that I have to keep them organized and keep everything in the book organized, from the planets to the colonels and the captains <laughs> and all this. and. The names of their uh, spaceships, their different spaceships and fighters. So I never have a dull minute in my day. Now, were you the type of young person who could just sort of entertain yourself? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and it sounds like you've got a vivid imagination, no doubt, <laughs> and uh, a lot of interest. I, I know as a as a teacher myself, preparing Bible lessons, I do a lot of research too, and I learn a lot more mm -hmm. than any of my students ever do. I'm sure, you know, exactly. But, but you, it forces you to uh, to dig into some of the uh, the fine details of, mm -hmm. about things. So for sure, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> Now, this is an important question that I, I'm going to be asking everybody on these interviews. When it comes to toilet paper, does it roll off the top or the bottom? It rolls off the top. Okay. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> As my daughter says, don't they know how to put it on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, what would you say, now we know about writing... What would you say are your hobbies or talents? Uh, embroidery, silk embroidery. I dabble in oil painting. Uh, I do cross stitch. Uh, I love to just walk in the woods. And I guess it actually all comes back to writing because someone asked me one time, how do you know what to write about? And I always tell them, you can write about anything. You can see a beautiful twisted tree, like some of these huge live oaks and all their different shapes. And you could write a story about that. You know, what happened, matter of fact, I wrote a poem about a tree, about tree trees. But, um, so everything I see has a story behind it. You know, you can see someone walking down the sidewalk and, uh, and just imagine 
what their life is. Right. And so it's, or you can see someone having a leash with no dog attached. And you think, did they lose their dog? Or what? What happened here? You know, or is it someone that has that lead holding it because somewhere in their mind that is a dog on the end of there. Like I saw a woman one time, an elderly woman, and she had dementia. But she held a doll that was all wrapped up in her arms and rocked it because that was her baby. That's what she thought. So there's always a story in everything yeah. you see. Uh, that is so true. Um, <clears throat> now, you mentioned where your children are living. You said uh, one in Florida, one of your daughters, mm -hmm. and Indiana. And Ohio. And Ohio. Okay. And how often do you get to get together with them or see them? Do they come visit you? Do you go to them or both? Uh, I don't get to see them. The last time I went home was in 2016. My son and his oldest, Jonathan, uh, visited about two years ago. Mm -hmm. They came down as total surprise, total <laughs> shock. But uh, they were just driving and they came down and, and spent two days here and then they went on their way. But That's good. Oh, about two years ago, let's see, it'll be two years in October, I did go to Ohio because I, uh, one of my grandsons was getting married, and I went for the wedding. Oh, good. Glad yes. you got to be there for that. Absolutely. Um, proudest achievement? Well, next to becoming a Christian, it would be publishing my first book. How did that feel? It felt fantastic. Not because I self-publish, so I don't make a great deal of money. But I did not publish it to make money. I published it because I wanted people to read it. And uh, so What kind of uh, responses have you gotten from readers over the years? Well, just one response I got over the weekend. I didn't remember this lady. I recognized her face, but I didn't remember her. And she came up to me. She goes, when is your next book coming out? She goes, don't tell me a year. <laughs> and I said, well, it'll be out in about six months. She goes, I have all of your other books. Oh, wow. And so that was... That was encouraging. Yes. <laughs> a little shot in the arm for sure. Yes. Um... What would, what would be your favorite Bible verse and why? I can't think of scripture and verse. I'm not good at that. Or if you can just quote part of it. But just where Jesus is, you know, he's my stronghold. And I know I can go to him anytime, anywhere and call out to him, whether it's a silent calling or a screaming calling, he hears me. And that is, he's, he's there, he's always there. He's here with me. It's a comfort to know that no matter what we're going through, he's never leaves our side. He's always, he always, understands our deepest pain and hurt and um, it he feels that you know along with us and and yet he can still give us that peace in the middle of the craziness of life absolutely yes well Phyllis thank you for coming and being a part of